June 1971, the Soviet Union celebrates a historic space triumph. Three cosmonauts set a world record aboard the first orbital station. Yet as their capsule descends, a tiny valve fails, venting their lives to the void in seconds. What could turn triumph to tragedy so suddenly? Our search for answers begins where ambition and disaster collide. In the spring of 1971, the Soviet Union faced a new reality in the race for space. The American flag already flew on the moon, but Moscow's ambition shifted. Rather than chasing lunar headlines, Soviet planners set their sights on something the world had never seen, a permanent outpost in orbit. Salyut 1, launched on April 19, 1971, became the first civilian space station ever placed above Earth. Its gleaming hull, packed with scientific instruments and living quarters, orbited silently a direct answer to Western triumphs and a promise that socialist science would not be left behind. For the Soviet leadership, Salyut 1 was more than a technical project. It was a symbol. The station's existence signaled that the USSR could achieve lasting human presence in space, not just brief visits. It was a bold claim to continuity and resilience, designed to restore national prestige after the loss of the moon race. The plan was to keep cosmonauts aloft for weeks, not days, pushing the limits of endurance, engineering, and medical science. Continuous habitation would show the world that Soviet technology could support life in orbit, opening the door for future military and civilian platforms. The stakes were high. Every successful day aboard Salyut 1 would be broadcast as proof of Soviet leadership. Medical teams prepared experiments to track how the human body adapted to weightlessness, while engineers studied how station systems held up to the strain of long duration flight. The station's launch was celebrated in state media, its progress tracked by Western analysts, each side aware that the next breakthrough might shift the balance of global prestige. Salyut 1's arrival in orbit was only the beginning. The challenge now was to send a crew keep them working and healthy, and bring them home safely. The first attempt, Soyuz 10, failed to achieve a reliable dock and crew transfer. That setback made the next mission, Soyuz 11, e even more critical. The cosmonauts selected for this flight would not only attempt to board the world's first space station, they would have the chance to become the first humans to live and work in orbit for nearly a month. The world watched as the Soviet Union prepared to turn ambition into reality, with Salyut 1 as the new stage for human presence beyond Earth. Three men, Georgi Dobrovolsky, Vladislav Volkov, and Viktor Patsayev, stood on the edge of history in June 1971. Their assignment had come with little warning. Only three days before launch, the original Prime crew was pulled after a medical scan flagged a hot a possible lung issue. Soviet rules required a full crew substitution, not just one cosmonaut. Suddenly, the backup team found themselves preparing for a mission that would test the limits of human endurance and Soviet engineering. Dobrovolsky, the commander, had trained for years but had never flown in space. Born in the Odessa region, he was a military pilot by trade, known for his discipline and quiet resolve. This would be his first and only chance to fly. Volkov, the flight engineer, brought a rare combination of experience and technical skill. He had already orbited Earth on Soyuz 7 and was deeply familiar with spacecraft systems, having worked as an engineer at the design bureau before joining the cosmonaut corps. Patsayev, the mission's research specialist, was an instrument engineer with a fascination for astronomy. He would become the first person to operate a telescope from space. On June 6, 1971. Soyuz 11 thundered away from Baikonur Cosmodrome. The capsule carried all three men into low Earth orbit, where they spent a day performing approach maneuvers before docking with Salyut 1. The next morning, June 7, they floated through the hatch, becoming the first humans to board an orbiting space station. For the Soviet Union, it was a moment of national pride. For the crew, it was the start of a record-setting journey. Their mission lasted 23 days, setting a new benchmark for human presence in space. Inside Salyut 1, the crew divided their time between scientific experiments 
engineering tasks, and daily routines that tested the body in microgravity. Medical teams on the ground tracked their adaptation to weightlessness, collecting data on heart rate, muscle loss, and sleep cycles. Patsayev's work with the Orion 1 ultraviolet telescope opened a new window on the cosmos, while Volkov's engineering expertise kept the station running through minor malfunctions and unexpected challenges. At times, they faced smoke and system alarms that forced temporary retreats to their Soyuz capsule. But each setback was met with determination and teamwork. The world watched as Dobrovolsky, Volkov, and Patsayev proved that people could not only survive but thrive in orbit for weeks at a time. Their voices beamed down to Earth in radio reports, their images broadcast in Soviet newsreels. By the time they prepared for undocking, the mission had already rewritten the rules of human spaceflight. Yet behind the triumph, subtle risks lingered, choices in spacecraft design and crew configuration that would soon come under scrutiny. Separation began high above the Earth, nearly 168 kilometers up. The Soyuz descent module carrying Dobrovolsky, Volkov, and Patsayev was supposed to glide home through a carefully choreographed sequence. Instead, a flaw hidden deep in the spacecraft's design turned triumph to tragedy in less than a minute. As explosive bolts fired to split the modules apart, a jolt stronger than intended shook the capsule. The pressure equalization valve, meant to stay sealed until the crew was safe on the ground, was knocked open by the shock. In an instant, the only barrier between the cosmonauts and the vacuum of space was gone. The valve's opening created a small but deadly path, barely wider than a coin, through which the cabin's atmosphere rushed out. From a comfortable sea level pressure, the air inside dropped to almost nothing in less than a second. Biomedical data later showed a spike in breathing and heart rates, the body's last desperate response to suffocation. Within 10 to 15 seconds, the oxygen in their blood collapsed. Darkness closed in. There was no time to reach the valve, hidden behind their seats, no time to pull off straps or fight the force of decompression. The crew had no pressure suits, nothing to protect them from the vacuum. The pressure curve, reconstructed later, shows a near vertical plunge, one atmosphere to a near perfect vacuum in half a second. After that, only silence. The cosmonauts lost consciousness almost immediately, with cardiac arrest following in less than a minute. Three men, who had just completed humanity's first long-term mission aboard a space station, died in the emptiness above Kazakhstan, their final moments unseen and un unheard. The cost of a single overlooked valve and the decision to fly without suits was absolute. News of the catastrophe reached the outside world accompanied by silence and ambiguity. The Soviet government released only the barest facts. Soyuz 11 had landed, the crew was dead, and the nation mourned its heroes. No mention of valves, vacuum, or the moments that ended the mission. Official statements praised sacrifice and endurance, avoiding technical explanations. In Moscow, the three cosmonauts lay in state, honored with a funeral in Red Square, and burial in the Kremlin Wall, a gesture reserved for the most revered. International observers, including NASA astronaut Thomas Stafford, attended in a rare display of Cold War respect. Inside Soviet engineering circles, the reaction was urgent and unsparing. The state commission convened at once, sifting through fragments of telemetry, scorched hardware, and medical reports. Their findings pointed to a single, devastating flaw a pressure equalization valve dislodged by the shock of simultaneous separation charges had opened the capsule to space the absence of pressure suit meant there was no defense the commission's recommendations were clear no more soyuz flights without major changes redesign began immediately the next generation soyuz 12 launched in 1973 with only two crew each sealed in a so-called pressure suit the descent module's valves were rebuilt for greater resilience and manual shutoffs were added within reach. Pyrotechnic systems were modified to prevent simultaneous firing. These changes, born from tragedy, became permanent standards. Since then, no Soyuz crew has perished from cabin depress uh, depressurization. The legacy of Dobrovolsky, Volkov, and Patsayev lives on in every suit zipped, every hatch checked, 
and every safe return. Their sacrifice forced a reckoning, and the lessons written in silence became the foundation of reliability in human spaceflight. Every modern astronaut now launches in a pressure suit, a safety standard written in the aftermath of Soyuz 11. As private spaceflight accelerates, the cost of complacency remains unchanged. Progress in orbit still demands vigilance on Earth. Human lives hinge on lessons we cannot afford to forget.